It's a very traditional folktale uh, about one of those stepmothers who favors her own lazy, rude daughter over the good, industrious girl of her new husband. Well, the stepmother and her daughter Dorla made Lenka's life miserable for a very long time. And finally, the stepmother declared she had had enough of this girl Lenka and she would have her no more in her house. She must go out and find her own way in the world. Well, the husband argued, but there was no getting past it. He had to take Lenka and find her a place. And having no place to take her, he led her up into the mountains where he built a little two-room hut for her. He was embarrassed to tell her that he was going to leave her there. And so he told her that he would go off into the forest and cu cut some wood for her. Well, as the day came to an end and it began to get dark, poor Lenka realized that she was truly all alone. She decided that at least she had better have her supper and she opened the sack of food that the stepmother had sent with her. But, oh, the sack only contained straw and ashes and stones. And Lenka sat down and just cried. While she was crying, an old beggar came to the door. God grant you happiness, my child, he said. Oh, and the same to you, said Lenka, politely. Then the old beggar said to her, would you be so kind as to wash my face and give me some food? Oh, said Lenka, I would gladly wash your face. But there's no water here and nothing to carry it in. And I have no food for my stepmother gave me only straw and ashes and stones. Don't worry about it, said the old beggar. Go out in back of the hut and you'll find a little stream there. And so Lenka went out and back, and sure enough, there was a stream and a bucket sitting there. She filled the bucket, took it back to the hut. Oh, she was amazed as she went through the door. There on the wall were plates, big plates and little plates and cups and everything that should be in a kitchen and the old beggar had started a fire. Look again in the sack, he said. <laughs> so Lenka untied the sack again, and it was filled with meal and bread and meat. And she began to prepare supper. When the food was ready, she took the water and washed the old beggar's face and hands, and they sat down and ate. And after dinner, Lenka took her shabby clothes and spread them on the floor of the second room and put the beggar there for the night. And she lay down on the bench in front of the fire. It was a hard bed, but she didn't complain. And pretty soon she was asleep. At midnight, she was wakened by a pounding on the door and a voice called out. A small man am I, six inches high, but a long, long beard hangs from my chin. Open the door and let me in. Lenka jumped down and went to the door and opened it. And there was a tiny little dwarf with a very long beard. He was Longbeard of the mountains. She had heard stories about him. And he was dragging behind him a heavy bag full of golden ducats. He came right into the hut and he said to her, 
I was that old beggar whose face you washed and with whom you shared your supper. And these ducats are yours to thank you for your kindness. Now, go into your room and rest. Well, so it was that many days later, when Linka's father came to see what had happened to his child, he feared that animals might have eaten her or that she had just starved to death and that he might have to gather up her bones. But he found a very happy girl singing and sitting there spinning. And that little hut had been transformed into a cheerful little cottage. Oh, she said, you did very well in finding me this place. And then she took a tablecloth and she filled it with some of those golden ducats and gave it to her father. Oh, he was so happy as he went on his way home thinking that such good things had happened for her. Well, when he got home and was approaching his own home, the old dog that they had who was lying there in the doorway began to bark and carry on. Oh, whoa, he said, here comes the master. And it's chink, chink the money before him and chink, chink the money behind him. Oh, nonsense, said the stepmother. <laughs> It's rattle, rattle the bones behind him and rattle, rattle the bones in front of him. Well, when the man came into the hut, he asked his wife for a basket so he could empty the tablecloth. And she just yelled at him. She said, well, why should I give you a basket for your daughter's bones? But he chinked the money in the tablecloth and she was happy enough to go get a basket. Well, when she had put the money away, she looked at him and she said, well, isn't that just like you to do so well by your Linka? But what have you ever done for my Dorla? Tomorrow, you're going to take her into those mountains and find a place for her. And the stepmother packed up some nice clothes and a good bed and as much food as she could gather up and the next morning sent Dorla off with her husband to the mountains. And then he took her, built a little hut for her, and left her there. Oh, Dorla spent the afternoon thinking oh, of the good supper she would fix. And when the time came, she began to do that. And the old beggar came to the door. Good evening, my child. Would you please give me some food to eat and wash my face? Wash your face, said Dorla. This is what I'll do with you. And she just slammed the door on him. Very well, said the old beggar. Very well. Well, Dorla ate up all the supper all by herself. And after supper, lay down on her nice bed at midnight, it was the banging on the door. A little man am I, six inches high, but a long, long beard hangs from my chin. Open the door and let me in. Oh, she was afraid. She tried to hide. But long beard pushed the door open, came in, caught her. And he shook that girl right out of her skin. <laughs> Served her right, too, because she was really wicked and spiteful. She had never said a kind word to anybody in her life. He left her bones on the floor. He hung her skin up on a nail behind the door. <laughs> and he put her skull in the window. Well, three days later, Dorla's mother said to her husband, oh, you must go and see how Dorla is doing. She gave him a nice tablecloth. This is for the ducats, she said. 
So the husband set out. As he was coming up the mountain toward the hut, he thought he saw something smiling from the window. He said, oh my, she must be really happy to see me, to be smiling at this distance. But when he got into the hut, he found only those bones on the floor, the skin, the back of the door, the skull, and the window. Without a word, he gathered them all up into the tablecloth and set off home. As he got near home, the old dog at the door began to bark and carry on. Bow oh, wow, he said, here comes the master, and it's rattle rattle before him and rattle rattle behind him. Nonsense, said the stepmother, and she beat the dog. It's chink chink before him and chink chink behind him. The man came into the hut. He asked her for a basket, which she happily brought out. But when he opened the tablecloth, there was only the rattle-rattle of the bone.